Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to make red sauce with meatballs and sausage. And we're going to use some inexpensive products including these peppers that we got at the Dollar Tree. So first thing you're going to need is two 26 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes or crushed and one puree or crushed and one whole, it's up to you. Some extra virgin olive oil. You're going to need some tomato paste. This is a two tablespoon pouch I got at the Dollar Tree. Then we're going to need some spices, salt and pepper, Italian blend seasoning, dry basil, dry oregano, and some bay leaves. Then you're going to need some mild Italian sausage. I actually prefer sweet, but if you like hot or mild, it's up to you. You're going to need one pound of ground beef for the meatballs, half a cup of Italian seasoned Progresso breadcrumbs, one egg. They don't have to be Progresso, by the way, just Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. <laughs> And um, you want to set your oven to 350. And then before you get any of your um, meat going, we're going to start the sauce. The reason we're doing it this way is because we're trying not to add sugar to the sauce. This is going to be a slow cook sauce. So here's I'm going to teach you some things that I've learned. This isn't just about having a recipe. This is about some techniques and tips, okay? Um, so one of the things is, you can see over there on the side, I'm getting ready to peel some fresh garlic and testing to see if my pan's warm. When the pan starts to get warm, you're going to drizzle the bottom with olive oil and you're going to do the, um, let the olive oil get to just to the smoke point, okay? And I'm sorry that the, the cutting board's a little blown out, but I'll show you in a second. I'm just peeling three cloves of garlic and the reason I was doing three was because uh, two are going to go in the sauce, and one was going to go in the meatballs. Um, so I figured I'd chop them all at the same time. There you go, now you can see it better. And um, I did that to show you, um, once I peeled the garlic, it didn't look like it was good anymore. Um, this was a nice, tight clove that I had gotten, and um, sometimes you cannot tell um, till you get it open what it's actually looks like inside if it hasn't begun to sprout. And this one had not begun to sprout. But once I chopped it, it did not look good at all. So um, what I'm doing now is once the oil has gotten to the smoke point, I'm putting in half the bags of the pepper and onion stir fry that I got at the Dollar Tree. Um, you can chop a half of an onion and a half of a green and a half of a red pepper uh, for this amount of sauce. Or, again, like many of our recipes, you could do what you prefer. If you like it really vegetable-y, then go ahead and add a whole pepper of each, um, a whole onion. That's good, too. I, just as long as your proportions are even to, like, one pepper to one onion. Um, um, excuse me, one pepper to one half onion, excuse me. And I'm decided just to get rid of that garlic. Um, I wanted to just show you guys that, you know, it, it had a roll with the punches. This is why we keep jarred garlic in the house, in case something goes wrong in the middle of a meal. Um, or I also keep it, you know, for things when they want to get a quick, quick cook and I don't have to sit there and chop. But this jarred garlic, the equivalent of one clove is one teaspoon of garlic, it says on the jar. So we're going to add two teaspoons of garlic to this peppers and onions after they start to cook down. Now, if these were raw peppers and onions, you would add a little salt to sweat them a little bit, okay? That draws the moisture out and helps them cook down a little bit easier. And I'm sorry the steam is getting to the, uh, to the screen, but I wanted to tell you too, I'm still got medicine head. I'm still trying to treat whatever is going around the house. Um, I do feel much better, but I do still have a lot of cough and congestion. That's why I sound like this. But I also felt like, um, probably wasn't the best day to teach you something or to cook something <laughs> because I did just like almost burn the garlic a little bit, you know, that kind of stuff. So. Um, there we go. I put on the fan so now that you guys can see what's happening in the pot. So what I've done is I've taken this pack of, um, uh, tomato paste. Now, Pop always told me to, um, brown the tomato paste a little bit with the vegetables. So you do vegetables, add your garlic, and then add your tomato paste as soon as you can so you don't burn your garlic. Um, this jarred garlic does cook faster than raw garlic, so keep that in mind. Um... And um, this is two tablespoons of tomato paste. He never had anything convenient like this when, we, when he was alive and cooking. Um, he always had to, like, use half a can or something. But he also never made a small batch of sauce ever, I don't think. 
And I'm sorry, it just got real foggy here for a second. It's going to clear up in a second. I didn't realize while I was recording that it was getting so fogged up. Um, I didn't clean it as often as I should have. What I've done here is I've just um, poured in the one can of diced tomatoes, which is a 15-ounce can of diced tomatoes, and the two cans of the crushed tomatoes. Now, what I was saying in the beginning was it is a matter of preference. It really is. Pop always told me the matter of preference is how you like your sauce. So some people don't like a chunky sauce. Some people do like a chunky sauce. Some people like a thick sauce. Some people like a thin sauce. It's kind of what you like. And also with what you're cooking it with. Like whenever you would make cacciatore which is with chicken, it would always be like a chunky, a chunkier, thinner sauce. Not thin, just thinner. Um, whenever it was a meat sauce, it was, always, it was always a very thick meat sauce. So, you know, depending on what you're making. What I'm teaching you how to make here is just like the middle ground. This is not going to be too spicy. It's not going to be too thick. It's not going to be too thin. It's not going to be too chunky, and it's not going to be too even either. It's going to have some chunk to it. Um... But whenever he uses whole tomatoes, you squeeze the whole tomatoes in your hand until they break apart just enough. Um, whenever you make a big pot of sauce for lasagna, it was always six cans, six large cans of tomatoes. It was two puree, two crushed, and two whole. Just to give you guys that. It was also two green peppers, two red peppers, and one whole large onion or two medium onions. Okay. So now that I've shared that with you. <laughs> Um, what I've done too is I've taken one of the 15 ounce cans and I've rinsed to get all of the goodness out of it, poured it in the other 15 ounce can and then rinsed it and poured it in the jar, in the pot. So this pot also has one, I'm sorry, I keep saying 16 ounce can, the 26 ounce cans, the big cans. So this pot also has one big can of water. Okay, and we're just going to cook it down. Um, and as soon as it comes to a boil, we'll cover it and we'll just let it go. Um, and I am sorry I sound so nasal. The first thing I'm going to drop is in two dry bay leaves. Um, I'm going to use two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Actually, I take that back. It's one teaspoon of Italian seasoning and one teaspoon of basil. Now... If it was the time of year where basil was fresh or you could get your hands on fresh basil or if you have an herb garden, you would use, for this recipe, you would use two to three big to medium leaves. Um, and then you roll them in chiffonade. That's what Pop used to do. But otherwise, it's a, uh, a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of dry basil. And that's just at this point. Don't put your herbs and spices away just yet. What we're going to do is we're going to also add some salt and pepper. And we're not going to salt too much because when we're going to cook the meatballs down in this and the sausage down in this, it will draw some salt out of those meats. But it's also better to do it when the sauce is cooked down. It will intensify in flavors. And when you taste it at the end, you decide whether it needs more salt and pepper. And now we're going to move on to making our meats. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to roast our sausage. Now, neither one of these meats is going to cook entirely in the oven right now. It's um, going to partially cook in the oven, and then we're going to finish it off in the sauce. Um, so what I'm doing is I've got one cookie sheet, because I don't care that these flavors meld, because they're going to be in the sauce together anyway. I've got one cookie sheet with two pieces of pop-up foil. I have... Half of the pop, excuse me, pop up foil on half of the pan that I'm going to roast the sausage on. You just want to separate them a little bit. You don't necessarily want them to touch. And my oven is preheated to 350 degrees, so I'm going to go ahead and start those while I make the meatballs. And the meatballs, you just need a mixing bowl. Put in the pound of ground beef. Now, this ground beef is um, the 90. 93% lean, 7% fat. So keep this in mind when you make your meatballs about how much fat is in them. Um, fat will is flavor, but fat will also cause shrinkage. So the I'm going to make these meatballs the size. They're going to almost come out exactly the size that I make them. 
But if you use a fattier meat, they will shrink down. So it's, it's important to keep that in mind, okay? They'll also release more fat into the sauce, which is also another thing to keep in mind, okay? So I've added one egg and the ground beef to a bowl. And I'm adding a half a cup of the Italian breadcrumbs, which just happened to be exactly what I had left. Excellent. I love when that happens. <laughs> and now I'm adding um, what's the equivalent of one clove of garlic to the meat and a half a teaspoon of basil and a full teaspoon of Italian seasoning and then just like the sauce salt and pepper now one of the things that um, could be optional that I'm going to add here as I'm going to add some dry whole oregano and I'm just going to do like about three quarters of a teaspoon of that um, and I'm also adding a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese that will also add some saltiness to it so keep that in mind when you salt your meat okay a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper take off your rings <laughs> with clean hands get in there oh got to get my scoop ready Because the worst thing is when you have meatball hands and your scoops not there <laughs> so when dealing with meatballs there's a like a f there's like a very short window where your meat won't fall apart and it won't be tough um, I mean, it's not like a 10 second window of kneading, but you kind of get a feel for it over time. Make some meatballs if they fall apart. Next time you make them, make sure you squeeze them together, the meat a little together, a little firmer. Um, if they come out too tough, then try to find your middle ground. This is something that you can only learn by doing. I wish I could say that there was a magic rule of saying just to knead for five minutes or something, but there, there isn't. <laughs> Then I'm taking, um, I think this is like a one ounce, it's like a two ounce scoop. I don't know, it's not really a two ounce scoop. Maybe it's like a one and a half ounce scoop. Um, and I'm only using the scoop so that they come out even. You want to use a measuring cup or tablespoons, however you want to do it, so that they come out. And you want them just about the same size, just because that's what they'll cook together at the same speed. They don't have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But I was showing you there that sometimes when you're feeling, see here, sometimes when you're rolling it, it feels like there's a hole or like an air pocket in there. Just make sure you work that stuff out because that is a perfect place where a meatball can split. And if you'll make a meatball here else, you don't care. If you're baking these all the way, it's not a huge deal. But when they're going to go in the sauce, if they split, then you're going to end up having two meatballs floating around there. <laughs> Which isn't the worst thing either, right? Um, I'm just going to mix all of them. I got 12 meatballs out of this pound of meat. Okay, um, so that's why I think they might be, this might be an ounce and a half scoop. Um, none of my scoops are labeled, it's really weird. Like, they, they marked on the packages when I got them, but none of them are actually marked on their scoop. So, you know, I don't remember which one's which, I'm sorry. Now, some options to this is um, garlic powder with the fresh garlic, onion flakes with um, fresh parsley is also one of the big things we love to add when we have it. Um, fresh parsley really do, do, does make these shine, these meatballs, but unfortunately I didn't have any. Um, so I just skipped the parsley altogether. But not everybody loves, you know, it's so weird because we talk about it all the time. Not everybody loves all the same flavors. Um, you know, if you don't like oregano in yours, don't put oregano. If you like more cheese in yours, put more cheese in yours. You know, you want to make yours with 80% uh, 80, 80 ground beef, go for it. You know, it's, it's really up to you what you like. Um, when my dad used to make this, he used to make them much bigger. Much bigger. But I know that... Um, we don't eat them like that here, so that's okay. Um, 
So I'm just making 12 little, little ones. All right, now I'm scooping up all four pieces of the foil. I was rolling them and putting it on that other piece of pop-up foil. I don't think I even told you that. <laughs> and I'm just laying it next to the sausage on the cookie sheet and arranging them. Um, like I said, I got 12, so there were three across and four down. And then we're going to bake them for 20 minutes. So the sausage have been in there for the five minutes uh, before we are making the, the meatballs. And now the meatballs are going to bake for 20 minutes. Like I said, you don't want them done. You just want them to be able to hold together inside the sauce. There we go. Nice and juicy. So if you notice that the sausage has a little bit of brown on the bottom. And the meatballs have a tiny bit of brown on the bottom as well. So not, not too much, just a tiny bit. And that's when you want to go ahead and add them to your sauce. Always give it a stir. Pop used to say, scrape the bottom, make sure it's not burning. But, you know, that was before nonstick pans. <laughs> so first I'm putting in the sausage. Now, an option could be to cut the sausage open. Some of that sausage juice will ooze out. But um, I like it to stay intact. But that's totally optional and up to you. If you um, are serving a lot of people and you're trying to get this meal to stretch, then you can go ahead and cut that sausage um, right before you serve it. And just put it right back in the pot. Um, that's okay, too. So this way everybody gets a little bit of sausage. But I like to cook it in there whole. Now you could just take these drippings and put them right in the pan, but there really wasn't that much left, so I just left it out. Give it a stir and let it cook. Cover it. And... Oh. I'm setting the timer for 40 minutes. <laughs> After the 40 minutes is up, Obviously, the fan is off. <laughs> Giving it a stir. Looks delicious. Oh my gosh, starting to smell so good. Now is the time that we're going to go ahead and add any additional seasoning we might need. Okay, so I'm just showing you this is what all this is. <laughs> First, we want to do is we want to taste it. Okay. Um, give it a taste. And I did. I basically added exactly um, one more of everything um, except salt. It definitely was salty enough. Um, and I'm cooking it now for 30 more minutes with the cover off. I'm sorry I didn't show you me add the extra seasonings, but I added another half teaspoon, three quarters of a teaspoon of basil, one whole teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And I also added some garlic powder. Um, just a sprinkle. Pop used to like a combination of fresh garlic and garlic powder because they had different flavor notes. All right, and then the sauce is finished. If you needed to have the sauce cooked faster, you could have just added sugar to it. When you cook it down, that's what reduces the acid in the tomatoes. If you're doing a quick sauce, you could just add sugar. And of course, that is also to preference. And then we're just going to take a little bit of sauce, toss the pasta in it for before serving. That's it. I've just decided to serve myself in the serving bowl since I don't want to have to do extra dishes. And that's it. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in learning this recipe. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.